welcome to the Faith is Not Blind podcast. I'm Kevin Knight, and I'm here in Gothenburg, Sweden, with Örjan Söderberg. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Örjan. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd love to start by hearing a little bit about how it is that you came to belong to this church. Yeah, okay. Um, I was... I remember when I was in, uh, like, in ninth grade, and I was really interested in, in religion. Okay. And I had this... How do you, if there ain't any specific truth, how can you then determine it if you do something bad or good? Okay. So everyone is talking about it constantly. Sure. But in, in order for it to work, it needs some external moral. Uh -huh. And uh, so I was actually interested. I, I read some of the Bible reading back then and, and I checked out some other things like that. I had, um, like most of the people in Sweden, I don't have any religious parents. Okay. But they did take me to Sunday school when I was a kid, just for checking it out. But normal Swedish church, yeah, state sure, church. Sure. So and and then kind of being a teenager, just. Why do you think living. your parents took you to Sunday school when they themselves were not religious? It's a good question. I think that my neighbor went, and they thought it would be a good thing for me to check out. Okay. It's like yeah, they are very open-minded. Yeah. It's a one. My father is an engineer, and my mother is a kindergarten a teacher so okay. it's like combined there yeah and you almost you can try out everything yeah okay uh, as long as you're honest yeah that's that's the important so thing. raised with a really strong set of core values yeah hard-working open, open-minded parents who wanted you to find your own way yeah okay yeah okay I know my wife used to say that my my mother would be perfect relief society president yeah. okay <laughs> Here, we even have we even had the storage uh, like Half really? a year storage when I was wow. a kid. Okay. Yeah. So you were you were prepared. Yeah, but no faith. Okay. Yeah, no. Only 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 doing stuff. Okay. So I might have been I could have been Jewish also. Okay, that's true. I would be a good Jew. Um so and then when I was twenty one mm -hmm. I went to ski in, in the Alps in uh, in Chamonix in, in France for mm -hmm. half a year. And I kind of saw things that I didn't see at home in my very comfortable middle-class home. Okay. Uh, and it waked me up a little bit. And then my grandmother died. And that really, was, that was for me like some kind of parody. Like I need to have, a, to make a choice. Do I believe that she exists in a way? Or do I believe that she's like, poof, Right. So I actually, then I had been at some parties. It's a little bit messed up here. Because actually, I, was, I went to church back in 85, three years before I got baptized. Because I, I was invited to parties. Okay. Yeah, good parties. A lot of, a lot of girls, uh -huh. and everyone, you know, I was, everyone was nice. Yeah. Um, so I had, had been in church. I even had a relationship with one of girl, a girl in church really? for a couple of months. Okay. But I was never interested in the religion. So you never investigated or anything when no, you were dating her? No, no. I was okay. like, you know... It's purely social. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of... I remember I went to talk with some missionaries, but they were like, I, I did it for her sake, not for my sake. Okay. Sure. But then after France, or after, after my, grandmother. my grandmother died, I was really... I was honest. So I thought like, okay, I had to check it out. And during this time, also a friend of mine that I was skiing with, he was on a mission in London, in London South. Uh, someone who you met skiing or you knew before you went? Who lived in the same suburban area as okay. I did. Okay. Yeah, so he was a friend of mine. Sure. Uh, he was one of those who took me to these parties. Oh yeah, okay. So, but you know, you have a lot of friends, but mm -hmm. it didn't work that way. But then right. I start thinking. So it was a tipping point for me. Mm -hmm. I had like kind of a cool, uh, like, Got a lot of knowledge, but it didn't matter anything. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it started to matter. So I read the whole Book of Mormon, I had read the whole Bible, and I called the mission office and said, I, know, I want to be teached. I want to have some teaching. Mm -hmm. and, and then I was After ready. After you read the entire Book of Mormon? You read it first before you wanted yeah, to? Yeah, I, I might have skipped some in Second Nephi. I'm not really sure there. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> Most of it. Some of the Isaiah chapters, maybe. Yeah, okay. probably. <laughs> you wouldn't be the first one. No. Okay. So, uh, but then I did the kind of... I turned to my heart and 
said, okay, so this is something I need. Mm -hmm. I, need to sh I need to check out if it's true to me. Mm -hmm. And that was totally different because before it was just, ah, that's, that's a neat idea, but it's nothing for me. Um, so I was actually baptized in England, not in Stockholm. I lived in Stockholm, uh -huh. but my friend was on a mission in England. So I arranged so that I could get there and he didn't know it. But he baptized me then in, in 1988. How long, uh, what, was the, what was the time span from your grandmother dying to you getting baptized? About three months. Three, that's, so that's pretty, pretty quick. Yeah. So driven by a sense of urgency that you really wanted to know what had happened to her. Yeah. Do you feel like at that time you were able to answer all of the questions that somebody might have before they join the church? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I probably, you know, I didn't know in everything myself, okay. but I remember being more, we say, when I read uh, Dr. and Covenant, mm -hmm. when I read about Joseph Smith's stories, I felt more like that was something that I could have done mm -hmm. or could have experienced. Than I did when I actually read the Book of Mormon. I, I like the Doctrine and Covenants better, Covenants. Okay. actually. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I think that I, I there was coming things. Of course, there was. I remember, for example, with the, um, uh, the priesthood mm -hmm. and being Afri you know, mm -hmm. from Africa or not, and being black. Mm -hmm. But then we had a family in the in the church who was actually from North Africa. So I, I said, like, okay, I can go and ask him. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, nah, it's not a problem for me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, damn, why well, shouldn't it be a problem for me either? Okay. So I tried to investigate things to the bottom. Okay. I like that. Um, so what is it that gave you the confidence to get baptized? It's a big decision, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and clearly it meant a lot to you if you were going to travel to England and mm -hmm. arrange to you know, surprise your friend. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what what gave you enough of a sense of assurance that you were able to? Yeah, that's to a good that. question. I remember when going home, I was actually living with my parents then. Uh -huh. Going home and telling them that I'm going to baptize, going to get baptized, they didn't really like it. Okay. But that was, I think, most of people are afraid that you should, you will be, you know, you change too much. Right, yeah. I actually had one of my best friends, she would start, start crying when I told her. Oh, she was worried like, that... Yeah, and then we didn't talk for a year, but then she yeah. we re reconnected. But that w it, for me, it was a really, really strong feeling when I accepted the, the, when they asked me if, if I believed that Joseph Smith was a true prophet. Uh -huh. And I, did re I, I felt it. It was like... A couple of degrees higher. It was like a sauna in the room for me. It's it's really heavy feeling. Okay. And I remember that really strong. Okay. And even when I was, you know, when I'm being in doubt or or, but I never doubted that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of an anchor for you. Yeah, it's an anchor. That point. experience, um, when they asked you if you believed and then saying that you believed it, you felt such conviction that it's kind yeah. of an anchor for you for. 20 years since, more than that. Yeah, yeah. it's almost 30 years now. Yeah. And um, how much longer after you got baptized did you meet your wife? Uh, one year. One year, About okay. one year. And was yeah. she a member of the church already? Yeah. She was, okay. I remember when she stepped in the Sunday school room. I, I remember her hairdo and her stockings. Okay. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you have now spent more time as a member of the church than you did yeah. um, before you joined. Yeah. What's that journey been like since the baptism? You know, we often refer to baptism oh, yeah. as a gateway, right? Mm -hmm. How have you continued to investigate the church? You said you like mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of your, of mm -hmm. your questions. What has that been like for you over almost 30 years? Now, in, in, in these last years, when people talk about, oh, I didn't know that, and oh, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. I'm like, what? Uh -huh. It's been there all the time. I read it 25 years ago. Yeah. So I actually read a lot. Okay. Uh, and I didn't understand everything. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's very important that, that 
you need always to think who is when is it happening and where and who because even now you in the states i mean the in sweden we we don't share the same culture right. we share some values and things mm -hmm. and we have the church culture and all that but if someone say something in sweden and you say the same thing in the states it doesn't mean the same thing right uh, and for me that's also the 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 foundation of design that's that's my occupation i work with you're so, an industrial designer yeah mm -hmm. so that you need to understand who is doing something in order to understand what they are doing and i so think that i had to think it for me. them because you yeah. have to design for how they're going to use it yeah uh-huh and then I, so I, I think that when i talk for example i mean this this story about those people um leaving and then i don't remember what it's called oh everyone who died during the winter the pioneers oh yeah uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. it, it's you can when you think about it it's like that's stupid to go to walk uh, in in the wilderness in, in the middle of the winter mm -hmm. that's really stupid and it's not until you know what should happen to them if they stayed right that you understand why they walked right but if you think of that i wouldn't do that no but you have like television and internet and <laughs> airplanes yeah, and, yeah. Heat, you know it's, and i think that most of the times people make that mistake very interesting so what I'm hearing is when we when we look at the history of the church, for example, mm -hmm. you, you try to understand the context in which those people did what they did. Mm -hmm. um, bringing your background as an industrial designer, where you have to first understand why somebody thinks the way they do before mm -hmm. you can. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It gives you a bottom. For example, I think about if something is written in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now it's. Well, in the Book of Mormon, he sat there and grave in the. He was doing the plates first, mm -hmm. and then graving in the plates. It's not you don't you don't grave in something around kosher. It's like yeah, I don't know what to write, but here's something nice. Yeah, you actually think about it and you feel the spirit. So I was, I tried to think. Okay, so why does he write this? Why is it in the book? Yeah, it needs to have some reason, well, and I, then it's up to me to understand that reason. Have, I'm, you have three kids, right? Sorry? You have three kids? Yeah. Okay. Did you try to raise them with that same sort of oh, yeah. open-minded culture yeah. that your parents instilled in you? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember. And also questioning everything. Uh -huh. So I remember when my oldest kid said, So dad, how comes that when we should eat dinner, we need to wash our hands, but not when we take a sandwich? <laughs> okay. So we started to wash our hands when we came home instead. Ah, okay. So yeah, I would try to reach them and teach them to be critical in a positive way. So well, and, and, and what is that? Like how, what characterizes being critical, questioning, but in a positive way? Mm. What's the difference between doing it in a positive way and a negative way? Um, the most obvious is that if you do it in a, in a negative way, it's like, why are, it's more like, you, why are you doing it to me? Why, why, why should I do something? Okay. Uh, and, and the positive way is, okay, what's the reason? What did you think? Mm -hmm. Why are you serving me this dinner instead of what we talked about? Maybe there's a good reason behind it. Okay, so that kind of benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I agree okay. so. Okay. Now, it didn't turn out that all, all of my kids are not active in the church. Uh -huh. So it's not, you know, it's not a Eureka way. Sure. So the oldest one is not, but he's never been religious as a person. Mm -hmm. But then my, my middle and my youngest, my youngest just came home from a mission. And my middle, who has uh, Asperger autism, he's, uh, we, we've been talking that way all the time. It's like, yeah, sometimes may I say, man, so what's the alternative? If you don't believe in God, even though we can't grasp it, you know, scientifically, Right. What's the alternative? It's kind of boring alternative. Uh -huh. So, and if you, if you have two choices and you can't prove either of them, you might as well take the nicest one. Right. And then see what, what does it bring to you? The, you know, the fruits. Taste of, of the fruit. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I know I, I told my, said to my parents, I think that my kids needs the gospel. You know, you don't have to believe it, but it gives them something good to look forward to. Because mm -hmm. a lot of kids now, they don't have anything good to look forward to. 
They get scared of the future. Interesting. Okay. How has the fact that your oldest does not practice the church affected your relationship with him? I think I think in the beginning I was a little bit angry because mm -hmm. you give you put a lot of work in them. Yeah. You go you drive into all this, you know, things, young adult stuff and young men and and you yeah. yeah. A lot, you know. Yeah. You have small kids now. Uh, and um but then I started to think that okay, this is how Heavenly Father in Christ has it all the time. Mm -hmm. People constantly say no, and and being a missionary is also like, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, but I want to save your life. No, I'm good. I like to drown. Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of accepted that in a way also that for myself then, you know, as I told you, I actually met the missionaries and then didn't care, didn't care, didn't care. Didn't care and then went and, and did my own appoint, mm -hmm. appointment mm -hmm. and get baptized and, and I'm still active. Mm -hmm. And I would like to, to talk with those first missionaries that said, okay, it went, no, it <laughs> turned out well. It worked out. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's the same thing here. It's like, yeah, as long as they're good persons and they strive and they kind of, sometimes a non-believer could be more Christian than a Christian in the way that they live their lives. I'm, uh, I'm thinking about the question that I asked just a couple of minutes ago. Hmm? What's the difference between that... Um, the positive questioning versus the the cynical questioning, and uh, and and that reminds me of the two times you investigated the church. Once, mm. yeah, you didn't really have any yeah. intent to do anything with it. Mm. Um, you were doing it as a courtesy to the girl you were dating, and the second time it was because you actually felt the need to know what had happened mm. to your grandmother when she passed away. Mm. Uh, that strikes me as a very mm. a very good illustration of the difference between not having real intent and having real intent mm. to act and, and how God is, is more likely to give us that revelation when he knows that we have that intent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, interesting. We talked uh, about how in, the, in, in, in that conversion process, one of the anchors for you and your testimony was that feeling when you were asked if you believed in Joseph, that Joseph Smith was a mm. prophet. Mm. Um, and so, so you're able to go back and, and point to this very specific moment where you felt like you gained at least a, a significant portion of your testimony. Yeah. Have, have, do you feel like your kids have had those similar moments? Is there anything that you have done to help them, to set them up to have those experiences that will serve as anchors for them? Probably not. Okay. Yeah. And that hurts me a little bit. I don't really know what I should do. I mean, I have some not that strong, mm -hmm. more like when they were younger. Uh -huh. And like we were praying over a rabbit that fell from very high down to a very hard floor and he made it. Okay. And it turned out well. And then, you know, some testimony meetings at the youth conference and stuff like that. But the, the contrast is not that big. You know, it's, it's harder to be born as a member and then kind of see what you have. And then have a dramatic, yeah, so you may not have a dramatic event. Yeah, it's like me being a middle-class kid, and then not before I, I met this French crack woman who lived next door, who was really, really nice, but mm -hmm. had an awful life. Then I understand the gap yeah. between me and her, and, and I still try to do that. I still, we are constantly a member of the Red Cross, for example, uh -huh. because they send a newspaper every month, and you can read about people having a much lesser life than we have right. and we need to appreciate it okay what is what's one piece of advice that you would give someone who maybe grew up in the church maybe they're a multiple generations member of the mm. church and so maybe their upbringing has been a little bit more like your children where for them they were surrounded by the gospel yeah. their whole lives and 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 now maybe they're beginning to investigate in earnest in adulthood. Maybe they took for granted or, or, mm. or, or didn't really uh, ever um, actively seek those answers for themselves. They were kind of going with the flow. Mm. And now, for whatever reason, they find themselves in a, in a position where they're, they're really asking themselves, do I really believe this? Mm. Um, as somebody who joined the church in adulthood, what advice would you have to somebody like that? To really try to see with true eyes how it is to live without it. To understand that it's kind of an empty life. Okay. 
Thank you, Arian. That's very, um, very insightful discussion. I appreciate you taking some time. Thank you. Today.